What's going on guys? Welcome to the video. Um, today I actually woke up, I've done like three or four really hard weightlifting days and running on the treadmill three days in a row and my body is just kind of like taxed. It's just tired and so I'm just taking a complete rest day. It's like my first rest day I've had since I kind of hurt myself a little bit more doing the backwards walking. So just resting, chilling at the beach, just enjoying the day, enjoying San Diego. and. Uh, but yeah, tomorrow I'm actually gonna go to the field for the first time, lace up the boots, and do the first actual like training session. It's gonna be very light again, but gradually going up, and hopefully I'll get back to where I once was here shortly. But anyway, another amazing day in San Diego. From now on, I'm not even gonna say it's an amazing day, just assume that it's a good day. I'll tell you when it's a bad day. Good morning guys, so basically right now I'm gonna get a workout in, I'm gonna do my normal two mile run, try to knock it down to below 15 minutes today for the two miles, and then I'm gonna go for the first time to a soccer field, lace up the boots and train. Very, very excited. Gonna be a very light training session though, as always, cause I'm trying to get back healthy. So basically in this video, I also wanna talk about just um, like some of the misconceptions that are around playing professional soccer or what it's like being a pro and uh, how it's probably a lot different than a lot of people think and uh, especially even how I thought even when you're back in college or uh, when I was back in high school you know it's just something that uh that you think about how easy it is to get a team or where to go or what it's going to be like it's it's completely different and uh, I want to talk about that later in this video but uh we are about a minute away from the gym so it's time for a workout So really, really happy about the, uh, the the running portion of today's workout because I got it in 14 minutes and 20 seconds, I think. So that's my best, I mean, my previous best was 16 minutes in the two mile. So really happy I'm lowering that back down to 14 minutes and 20 seconds. My goal is ultimately to get it below 12. And then once I get it to around 12, I wanna progress into more sprint work, change of directions, like more game realistic stuff instead of just running straight for a long period of time. The weightlifting session, I mean, I just get so tired so fast. I, I only did three exercises, like three to five sets between each of the exercises, and I'm just, my body just feels so taxed. Um, but like I said before in the last video, it will come, it will come. Just gotta stay, uh, stay positive about it. Wide open field. 
So the plan for today is pretty much just to do some simple cone weave stuff, maybe some very simple passing stuff, and honestly, maybe some juggling, and that's it. Very light, working back into it. Feels like so long since I've laced these up. <laughs> So good to be back, so nice. Um, it actually felt really good the entire time. Just a little time and like when I reach for it, when I'm juggling or when I do a hard pass with the left foot or even when I'm kind of like dribbling around the cones and I really exert myself, I can kind of feel it like pull a little bit. So I just gotta be careful that that pain isn't like an unnatural pain that's something I'm not used to because it's not gonna feel 100% when I come back out here. Um, but it's really just all about knowing that pain, knowing if it's like a pain that I should push through, knowing if it's, if it's a pain that I should stop. But felt good and I'm like, the endorphins are flowing. I'm feeling good, really happy about today's workout. Mimi, how was your stair workout? Amazing. And your lunges. So right now I just want to talk about like the misconceptions of playing professional soccer that I hear all the time. And I, I love the sport, I honestly do. And in the comment section you can read like, Matt, you should try it this club. Matt, you should try going to England. Matt, you should try this. And I wish it was that simple or that easy to do so. And the first misconception that I actually want to talk about is how easy it is to get a pro contract when you're already a pro. Everybody thinks that it's so hard to get that first pro contract, which it definitely is extremely, extremely hard to get that first pro contract. But once you get that first contract, I feel like a lot of younger athletes just think, you became a pro, so now there's no issue of staying a pro. There's no issue of finding another club if you need to find another club, or you're locked in that same pro club for as long as you want. And unfortunately, this is like the cruelest game and the cruelest profession because you're out there playing and playing and playing and if you have one bad season or if you, you're not performing or if the coach doesn't like you that much and isn't playing you, your career could be ended there and you could definitely have a very difficult time finding a club in that next year. So it's not as easy to stay a pro as a lot of people think. Just to give you some reference, I was actually talking to a scout at an MLS team and he told me directly that that particular MLS team gets over 2,000 applications or resumes or highlight videos from professional soccer players or aspiring professional soccer players a month. Over 2,000 emails they get a month about different players trying to play for that team, whether it's from an agent or the player themselves or from a representative or whoever. And that's just a single MLS team. So imagine the bigger teams or teams in different countries and how crazy that really is. The 
The next big misconception that a lot of people have about like playing pro soccer is that how easy it is to play in a different country. Again, if you're Messi, Neymar, Cristiano Ronaldo, etc., any team that you want to go to in a different country easily has the power and the financial means in order to get you a working visa so you can play there. However, if you are not playing in the top, top division of the country, it's incredibly difficult for that team to get international players, especially if you're trying to play in Germany, England, France, Spain. When I played in Germany, I actually did not get a working visa. I kind of cheated the system and got a student visa, which allowed me to stay there legally, and then I just worked as soccer as like a part-time job. And so it's funny, I get so many people like, Matt, why don't you try to play in England? Matt, why don't you play in Australia? Matt, why don't you try to play here? And if the visa situation was just a little bit easier, it'd be make a ton of sense. But I have friends who've played in New Zealand, Australia, I've played over in Germany, I have friends who play in Iceland, and everybody says the same exact thing. The visa situation is a nightmare. I can't go back, like I have a friend who can't go back to Australia even though he played there one year because it's extremely hard to get a visa for the second year. So the visa situation in playing abroad is incredibly difficult unless you're playing at a very high level and then it's very easy or easier to get the visa. Look at me these bunnies. So cute. The third and final misconception I always get is people always ask me, Matt, when are you gonna try to play in the MLS? Why don't you try to try out for these MLS teams? And I know you guys, again, are just want the best for me, want me to improve, want me to play at the highest level possible, but this idea of you need to try to play in the MLS is kind of false. I'm 100% trying at all times to play in the MLS and the biggest thing to get into the MLS is how I perform in my USL season. If I'm not performing in the USL season, if I'm not dominating in the USL, no MLS team is even going to give me a look. It doesn't care who it is, what happens, if I'm not performing in the USL and dominating the league, there's no chance I'm going to get looked at by the MLS club. But it's much more difficult than you think to progress up into the MLS or go over to Europe and play in a very high level without having a very good background or performance or outstanding couple of seasons from where you're at. It's just something that I think that I didn't really realize when I was not a pro and I'm sure many of, many of you do not realize that as well. So anyway, I'm gonna edit this video up and I'll see you guys in the next video. If you're liking the videos, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and uh, what else do I have to do? Oh yeah, follow me on the social media. All right, peace.